From the moment he set foot on an NBA court, Michael Jordan dominated his sport like few athletes ever had. You've been reading about a man of rag. Today, I consider myself the luckiest man on the face of the earth. It was beautiful, historical, artistically subtle in a way that science can't capture, and I found it fascinating. There is an indefinable, mysterious power that pervades everything. I feel it, though I do not see it. I have a dream that one day this nation will rise up, live up to the meaning of its for us just to take 15, 20 minutes and talk about this topic, legacy. Um, so I need a few things to happen before we do that. Number one, under your chair, you should um, see a packet of papers, and hopefully you have a pen or a pencil, and I want you to pull that out. Now, I want to be really clear. I want to be clear to those who already know me. I've been here youth pastor for a while, some of you guys a long, long time. Some of you, you're brand new. Let me tell you something about myself that I think you'll come to appreciate. It drives a lot of people crazy, but some people love it. I'm a very relaxed guy. I think I'm pretty chill in most things. Here's, here's what will drive me crazy, okay? And I want everyone to listen because you're already doing what drives me crazy. I, I don't care if you come to this every Sunday night and you don't want to listen to me. I have friends. I'm very confident. I'll sleep just fine. Like, if you come and you're just wasting your time and you don't want to listen to me, I know God is much bigger than that, and He will allow certain things to go into your heart despite you wanting to dodge bullets. However, what drives me absolutely crazy is when people come here and they do want to listen and you distract them. It makes my blood boil. Like when someone's trying to worship and, and talk to God and hear from his word, but they're just surrounded by distractions. That, that gets me. One of the ways I want to challenge you guys as middle and high school students is I promise you, your bladder can last you a lot longer than you think. So for some of you, you get up and down all the time. So my challenge to you is, if your bladder is not as strong as I would like to believe it is, then you need to sit in the back where you're not a distraction. And I don't say that to be mean. Like, I say that because there is a spiritual warfare going on anytime God's word is being preached. Like, anytime we talk about spiritual things, when I say a spiritual warfare, the enemy wants to keep you from hearing what it is I have to say. Satan's going to do anything he can to distract you. Like, Satan's going to do anything he can to try and get in your mind and make you think about other things. Like, okay, what do I have going on Monday? Uh, homework. Oh, there is no homework. How nice is that? Uh, but it's summer, and what do I have to do tomorrow? Or There's so many distractions, and what I want to challenge you guys is to give me 15 to 20 minutes of your time on Sunday nights, and to let me battle uh, all the time that culture has throughout the week with you. I, I don't get that long with you. But media does. Social media gets a lot more time with you than, than I do. Certain friends get a lot more time to influence you than I do, than my leaders do. So listen, when we're worshiping and when God's word is being preached, we respect that. Head nod, if you're with me, nothing makes my blood boil quicker 
than when God's word is being preached and it's not being respected. Because it's worthy, it's worthy of our respect. First John says that, that the word is God. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. It deserves our respect. And I hope you guys get excited when you know that you have a place where you can come to hear God's word talked about, to have it explained to you, to break up amongst other people and discuss what certain things mean or certain topics or certain passages of scripture. And some of you guys know my story, some of you don't, but I am a Greenville native. Raise your hand if you are also a Greenville native. Oh, there's a lot more than I thought. That makes me happy. And when I was in middle school, when I was in high school, I went to Southside Christian School. Do we have any sabers? No. Nathan Wessel was my only saber, and I lost him two years ago, and I'm really sad. I haven't gotten another Southsider back. But I went to Southside, and then when I got into high school, my freshman year, I joined another school called the Fine Arts Center. Anyone familiar with the Fine Arts Center? Yeah, the Fine Arts Center. So I went there all four years. Uh, some of you know, some of you don't. I am a drummer. When I was a little kid, my mom and my dad got me a drum set, and I just played it all the time. I fell in love with this instrument. So I went to the Fine Arts Center bright and early in the morning, and then I did not leave until 11.45 a.m. And I didn't go to my private school out in Simpsonville until about 1 o'clock. So there was a lunch break in there, and then I went to my private school at 1 o'clock. And I cannot tell you the unbelievable difference in the two schools that I went to. Now listen to me. I love the Fine Arts Center. I love their teachers. I, I love everything they're doing for the fine arts. But in many ways, it's a very dark place. So if you raised your hand and you are familiar with the Fine Arts Center, know that I have all the respect in the world for them. I hang their diploma in my office with pride. But I'm not going to turn a blind eye and a blind ear to recognizing it's a dark place. And then I would go to this private school that was screaming Jesus, 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 follow Jesus. And so it was like bipolar every day. It was like, follow yourself, do what feels right, your God, in the mornings, worship yourself, worship the things of maybe creation, so to say. And then I'd go eat lunch, and then I would come to a place that would say, it's not about you. It, it, there's something that's more about you. It's about Jesus. Follow Jesus. And so like, every day, it was just this crazy tornado of, of what, do I, what do I believe? And, and I think when we look at this topic of legacy, and there's so many tragedies in the world right now about people and certain legacies that they leave. When they wake up in the morning, like what is their purpose? What are they known for? And let me just start this off by saying this. What you think you're known for and maybe what other people think they know you for, that is not your identity. So maybe you're here and you think you're known as being the funny guy. Or maybe you're here and you're known for being a liar. Everywhere you go, they're like, yeah, there's so-and-so. Man, they are a liar. Can't trust them. Or, or maybe you're known for making poor um, decisions in relationships. Maybe with the opposite sex. And so you're finding your identity. You think you're known as the person fill in the blank. And some of you, you've just adopted it. You know it's not true about yourself. Maybe you've made some mistakes, but you've just adopted that for yourself. And so maybe you feel like that's the legacy you're going to leave behind. And, and so... What I want you guys to do with this piece of paper that I gave everyone is I kind of want for the next three weeks to go through some attributes of leadership. Now, everyone look at me. Everyone in this room, all eyes up here, everyone in this room is a leader. Everyone in this room has influence. Everyone in this room can impact somebody. Now, I believe there's different types of leaders. I believe people lead in very different ways. <clears throat> but everyone in this room is a leader. And so what I'm going to do for the next three, four weeks is just hit on certain leadership topics that I think need to be true for you, but then for us to look at that leadership attribute and what could this look like if Jesus was on the throne with that characteristic. Because there are certain people who have left legacies. 
Like we watched that video, Michael Jordan. Like, like we all know Michael Jordan. I mean, the dude is the bomb.com. LeBron isn't even coming close to that guy. I, it's not even a discussion. If I hear one more person try and talk about who's better, you're crazy. It's Michael Jordan. Huh? Amen. Amen. Thank you. It's Michael Jordan. Don't even come close. But listen, there's certain people who have left legacies, or maybe there's even certain people who haven't left legacies, but maybe they're just famous. And, and there is a difference. So I want you guys to take two minutes. I want you to go to the top of uh, where it says opening questions, and there's two questions. And I want you just to have a few minutes with your thoughts and your pen, and I want you to answer these two questions. Number one, how would you define the word legacy? Okay, so we're talking about it. Let's make sure we have a very good definition of the word legacy. Number two, what's the difference between fame and legacy? What's the difference between fame and legacy? And then we'll talk about it. You get two minutes. Go. Okay, some of you are finished, maybe some of you aren't while I'm talking, you can finish it up. Um, real quick, how would you define the word legacy? And, and I want to leave it open. Uh, let me just say this. If you raise your hand and you answer, um, give it back. I'll give it back on Daniel. You can give it to Daniel Cameron. Oh, oh, okay. He's right behind you, red shirt. Thank you. Okay, if I ask and call upon you to answer a question, this is not. Let's be a comedian time. Like, you say something that's beneficial, and you say something that's helpful, or I'll never call on you again. And I'll say, save that till the end. And that's my little trick of saying, I'm not going to answer that ever. Um, so, if you're here and you're like, you know what, I'm going to take a stab at this. I want to answer this question in front of everyone. Raise your hand, shout it out. Who, uh, what answer did you put down for how would you define the word legacy? Yes, sir. The message you believe, and what is evident to those you Good. Did everyone hear that? No. Let me say that again. The message that you believe, and that is evident to those who come upon that. Good. What else? Shout it out, Gary. Influencing others. What else? Yes, ma'am. Um, shout it out. Okay. Shout out. Okay. Um, Try your best. Well, I think it means uh, what you do in your life and what you believe in. Good. Awesome. Yes, sir. Good. Keyword. What you leave behind. That's good. We'll come back to that, Sheer. Well done. Yes, ma'am. What's that? A path you leave behind. Good. So that echoes a lot of what Sheer said. Last one. Grace. Yeah. How people remember you after you're successful or after death. Perfect. Good. Okay. And then, so, number two is, is, was kind of answering a lot of what you said. What's the difference between fame and legacy? Fame is obviously what you're known for. It would make you stand out in a crowd. Like, have you ever, have you ever met someone famous? That's just so much fun. Okay, like, so my wife is from Southern California. There was a time that she took me um, to Hollywood. 
And we got to, to walk down like all the Hollywood squares, not squares, stars, the stars. Okay. Something like that, yeah. And you're like, oh cool, this is Michael Jackson's handprint. Like, then you'd have fun, you'd talk about that, and you'd see all these famous people. And then, but like, you remember, who here has met anyone famous? Yeah, like you remember, you were like, oh my gosh, what do I do? What do I, do I talk to him? What do I, uh, right? Like I feel like that every time I go to an Atlanta Braves meet or greet. So uh, I love going to meet the Atlanta Braves. It's a bunch of people who play a sport that's super boring, and I love it. And, but when I get around them, it's like they hum the stars. I'm like, there's Chipper Jones. Oh, my goodness. And one time, Chipper was signing autographs, and there was this uh, rail, and I couldn't get to him. I had to stand in the line, and I didn't have time. And so I took out my phone, and I tried to take a selfie of me with Chipper behind me. And it's the greatest picture because right before I hit it, he just looks up and gives this like, bro, grow up. Kind of look like, we're both grown men. But I'm like, yeah. And Chipper's just like, like that. And so I love it. So I always zoom into his face and he's like, you're a weirdo. And he's like, he doesn't know what to do with that. And so, but there's a big difference between legacy and fame because listen, we're going to talk about certain people that have lived this life that you don't even know their name. They're not famous at all, but the legacy that they have left behind have left huge ripples for the kingdom of God. So there's people that we could know their name. They were to walk down the street. They're going to get bombarded with people. And it's also fun to have somewhat famous friends. So, some of you guys know Chris Sly. He used to go to church here. He went on American Idol. Now he, uh, he is selling songs to all sorts of artists all over the world. Like, who's ever heard Here Comes Goodbye by Rascal Flatts? No one. Good. Don't listen to my country. It's horrible. But Chris, Chris wrote it and sold it to Rascal Flatts. And he made a ton of money. But so Chris is kind of one of these behind-the-scenes songwriters that sell songs to these famous people. But Chris is somewhat, quote-unquote, famous in Greenville. So every time I'm downtown Greenville with him, we get stopped every two seconds. It's actually kind of fun. So I stand there like, I'm pretty cool at the end. I know. I'm with them. Where are you? Eat lunch. Move along. Right? Like, it's fun to be somewhat famous people. But listen, there's a huge difference between wanting to be famous and wanting to be known than what the Bible is going to say of what, what type of legacy do you want to leave behind. So also what I want to do with these packets is I would want this to be something that we're not going to be able to cover on a Sunday night. Like I would want this to be something you're chewing on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then when you come next week, we're going to talk about leaders have good communication. What does it mean to be a good communicator? What is it you're communicating? But it, it talks about what the Bible has to say. And here's what's crazy. Um, we're going to look at the book of 2 Kings. Everyone say 2 Kings. 2 Kings. While I'm talking, I want you to open up in your Bible to 2 Kings. And uh, listen to me. If you don't bring a Bible um, on Sunday nights, let me really encourage you to do so. I think it's really lame to use your Bible app, just FYI. I just think it's lame. That's just my opinion. Take it for what it's worth. There's something really cool about having the tangible Word of God. If there's any way that I can influence you, apps are lame. Everyone look at me, so I can put apps are lame. Now, however, it's very helpful when you're at Walmart and you're sharing Jesus and you don't have your Bible with you, whip that app at you, then I don't think it's lame. But when you're coming to church, when you're coming to hear and receive from the Word of God, I think you should bring your Bible. Nod your head if you're with me. Good. Second Kings, I want to look at uh, chapter 22, verses 11 through 13. And I want us to look at someone who left a really bad legacy. But then we're going to see this guy named Josiah and how he responds to that bad legacy. And then we're going to see what he does about that legacy. Because it's really cool. Now, all eyes up here. As you're turning to 2 Kings, okay? And you're going to see this in your notes right the bottom under what the Bible has to say. Um, know this. Um, the background notes at the Bible, or excuse me, at the bottom of this packet are really helpful. So if you have your pen, I want you to underline where it says um, Hezekiah was the last king of Judah before Josiah to follow God. Everyone just underline that. So we're going to look at this guy named Hezekiah, 
who was not doing what it is that God had for him to do. We're going to read about that in chapter uh, 22, and then we're going to look at chapter 23 about what Josiah did about it. So your homework for this week is to dive in to these chapters and their verses. Okay, I want you guys to really understand what type of legacy Hezekiah was leaving, how he was disobeying God, how he turned against God. But listen, as Christ followers, all eyes up here. I want us to look at Josiah, and I want us to really take away what it was he did when he inherited becoming a king. And here's what's even crazier. Um, right at the middle part of the paragraph, you'll see a line right in the middle that says, making Josiah the king when he was only eight years old. So when it was Josiah's turn to step up, he wasn't a seasoned vet after Hezekiah. He was in this lineage. He had to take over. All eyes up here. He was eight years old. Eight. Some of you are 15 and your mom's still waking you up in the morning. Like, oh my goodness. He was eight years old. And so what I want to do, turn to chapter 22. Uh, we're going to look at verses 11 through 13. And I want to read this. And please give me grace because there's some crazy names in here. And it's hard enough for me to read normal English. But when you start throwing in these crazy names... Don't make fun of me. Homeschoolers, I might call upon you. Just be ready. <laughs> Verse 11 says this. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And the king commanded Hilkiah, the priest, and Anakim, the son of Saphan, and Ankbor, the son of Micaiah, and Shepham, the secretary and Isaiah, the king's servant, saying, look at verse 13, Go inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord that is kindled against us because, pay attention right here, guys, because our fathers have not obeyed the words of this book to do according to all that is written concerning us. So you had Hezekiah, and you had his sons and their grandchildren, and, and their leadership, their authority, was straight just turning from the Word of God. They pretty much hid it from their people. The legacy that he left behind was going to be what Hezekiah wanted, not what God wanted. And so let's go back and, and look at these few verses again and break it down. When the king heard the words, let's stop there. It's talking about Josiah, who took over after King Hezekiah. Okay, And I love that this is over uh, the tribe of Judah. The reason why you should remember the name Judah is because I love that. We um, say about two different types of Judah. There's the line of Judah, which refers to right, Jesus. And then there was a tribe named Judah. I love... Uh, the tribes of Israel. My firstborn son, his name is Judah. My second is Levi, which is another tribe of Israel. And Judah and Levi, those two tribes, were best of friends. And that's what I want for my boys. Now, if, now I don't know what the future holds, but when the Lord gives me a third boy, and not a daughter, a third boy, I'm not man enough to have a daughter, I'm just not. Uh, when I get my third boy, his name will be Benjamin. Benjamin, and then uh, then you start running out of normal names because there is Dan. We can go by Daniel, but then there's one called Mad. <laughs> Mad. I don't know if I'm gonna have a son named Mad anytime soon. So you've got Judah, and they've got these kings, and you have Hezekiah who was hiding the word of God, like he was leaving a pretty crummy legacy for someone who claimed to be over a tribe of Israel. The Israelis are God's chosen people. So, you're starting to see that Hezekiah was not doing what he knew he needed to do. And so now you've got Josiah, who's the king, and this is his response in verse 11. When King Josiah heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. Generally in the Old Testament, when you see people tearing their clothes, like in 2017, if you were to see that in public, those people go to jail, they're... They're probably mentally insane. But, but one of the ways to mourn or to almost have a quote-unquote panic attack or to be like, 
holy cow, what's going on here? This is despicable. You'll see that in the Old Testament as they tore their clothes. Like that was a sign of distress. That was a sign of almost being disgusted. Ashamed almost. So Josiah hears the words of the book of the law. And the book of the law is Deuteronomy. When you hear of that book in the Old Testament, the book of the law, if you're ever having Bible trivia and someone says, what's the book of the law in the Old Testament? You can say, Deuteronomy, just like that, okay? Some commentaries say that it means the Torah. Now, the Torah is the first five books of the Bible, okay? So Josiah is hearing God's word for the first time. So when King heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his clothes. And Josiah commanded, and he goes through all these people. So he's commanding a priest, the son of that priest. He's a, a, a secretary, and Isaiah, the king's servant. So he's commanding all these people. Once he's tore his clothes, he goes back. And he says, go inquire of the Lord for me, and for the people, and for all of Judah. Concerning the words of this book that have been found. Everyone say the word found. So it's almost like these were hidden. It's almost like these were kept in such a place where they couldn't be found. And voila, it's now the king. He's starting to see the type of leadership that he's coming behind. And he's realizing what it is he inherited. Now let's just stop right there. A big part of when you look at the topic of legacy, a big part is this. What do people behind you inherit? So our, our juniors that are now seniors in this youth group, I really believe that the class of 2017 left a pretty healthy youth group for you to inherit. There wasn't a whole lot of garbage and drama and craziness that you were having to deal with. They left a pretty good legacy. Like the stuff that they testified about last week was so true. We gave glory to God. We celebrated together. But, but my question is, a big part of a legacy is what is it the people behind you inherit? Is it good? Is it bad? Like, one of the things that breaks my heart in doing student ministry is dealing with an older child, an older sibling in a family that's maybe a junior or a senior, and they're just not following the Lord, and they leave a huge mess, and then they go off to college. And they don't have to deal with the mess that they created. And who's having to inherit that mess? All the younger siblings. And so my question to you is, if you were to leave your house right now and go live somewhere else, what is it your parents or your siblings would inherit? Would it be good? Would it be bad? Or would it just be mediocre? It's not really either or. So a big part of leaders are to leave a legacy is when you're done, the impact of what you did is still felt in the years to come. So here's what's so great. Like, this ministry, a live student ministry, I could die tomorrow and this will be just fine. And I don't mean that to sound cocky. I mean that to remind myself that God doesn't need me. God does not need Tim Wadsworth. He is not a God that is dependent upon anything. But I do pray that the legacy that I leave here will be positively felt, will be one where they can say, man, Tim feared Jesus. Tim loved Jesus. He did the things he knew he needed to do, and because of that, it's sad, Tim's dead, but we're good. If I die, listen to me, if I die, I want snow cones at my funeral. So, and I want Brian to lead worship. And it better be fun stuff. And I want you to write a song about it. No, but like, but yeah, it's going to be a party. Just celebrate. It's okay. I'm with Jesus. It's good. But, but listen, I hope that the legacy I'm leaving will be felt for years to come. Positively. But not just positively, that of the kingdom. Now listen to me. Are there people on this planet that didn't know the Lord and left a pretty good legacy that's being felt generation after generation? Yes. But those of Jesus, we, we are to do so much more than that. In, in your packets, um, I want you to go to page three, where it says a second look. And I want you guys to read this later this week, but let me give you the cliff notes of how awesome this little story is. Um, it talks about uh, Samaritan's Purse, 
which is also a cousin to Operation Christmas Child. Raise your hand if you did a shoebox for us last year for Operation Christmas Child. The second paragraph talks about a man named Edward Kimball. Everyone square that name. Edward Kimball. Raise your hand if you've ever heard of Edward Kimball. Right, no one. Until I read this, I did not know who he was at all. But it goes through and it talks about that Edward took over the Sunday school class. And this Sunday school class was full of a bunch of jokers. They wouldn't listen to him. They were really disrespectful. There was times that Edward wanted to quit. He didn't look forward to going to teach these groups of boys, but he really felt that he was to stick with it. What he didn't know is that there was a boy in his class named Dwight Moody. Raise your hand if you know who Dwight Moody is. Yeah, now we're getting some hands in the air. Because, listen to this, because of Edward's faithfulness, because of the legacy that he wanted to leave behind, Dwight heard about who Jesus was and gave his life to Jesus. Now, if you keep going through the ripple effects of this legacy, Dwight Moody shared uh, about Jesus to a guy named Billy Graham. Raise your hand if you know who Billy Graham is. Right. So now you're seeing Edward is right here. No, no one. He's a no one. He was faithful. He knew what it was that he needed to do to die to self, to stick with these boys and love them. He was faithful. And there's probably a bunch of jokers, but there was the diamond in the rough named Dwight. Okay? Dwight hears Jesus. He accepts it. A spiritual giant. Dwight goes on to follow the Lord, shares Jesus' this guy named Billy Graham, another spiritual giant. And then Billy Graham goes on to have kids, and then you'll see Billy's son is talking about named Franklin. Franklin is the guy who came up with Operation Christmas Child. Operation Christmas Child sends out millions of shoeboxes all around the world to tell people about Jesus. That's a legacy. That's awesome. Like for somebody in this room, it's not about becoming famous, it's not about being known. It's about being faithful. It's about leaving a legacy with ripple effects that are going to shake the kingdom of God. Are you all with me? Yeah. Like, I hope this gets you guys excited, and I also hope it rebukes you a little bit. To ask yourself, what kind of legacy? If I were to die right now, I think I talked about this in uh, the main church service two, three weeks ago, but I saw a bumper sticker on a car, and it said... Live in such a way for when you die, people don't have to lie at your funeral. Live in such a way for when you die, people do not have to lie at your funeral. What kind of legacy are you leaving? How is this youth group going to feel one day when you leave? What are they going to know to be true about you? What is the ripple effect for the kingdom? So, we're reading in 2 Kings chapter 22 that now you see that Josiah is understanding he inherited a pretty crummy legacy of Hezekiah. So, if you turn back to page 2, uh, you'll see where it says, read 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 1 through 5. So, let's jump from chapter 22. We're going to go to chapter 23. We're going to read 1, one through 5. Uh, if you have the ESV, it's going to read what I have, but if you look above chapter 23, what is the title of this passage? Yeah, my, the ESV says Josiah's Reforms. Like, it's literally meaning like Josiah is now going to work. He understood what it is he inherited, and he rebuked it. He's not going to settle for that. He's going to step up, and he's going to change the legacy of the tribe of Judah. He's going to go back and say, you know what, this tribe is to follow God, to fear God, to honor God. I'm going to step up. There's a new captain in town. Get on board or hop off. So, verse 1 of chapter 23 says, then the king sent all of the elders of Judah and Jerusalem were gathered to him. And the king went up to the house of the Lord and with him all of the men of Judah and all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and the priests, and the prophets, all the people, both small and great. And he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant that had been found in the house of the Lord. 
And the king stood by the pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people joined in that covenant. Guys, how awesome is that? Eight, eight years old. Let's just picture this. Eight years old. So this is a huge call to middle and especially high schoolers, step up. Like, look at this legacy that he's leaving behind. Like, he is leading the people of the tribe of Judah, of Israel, and he's returning them back to the Word of God. Think of the ripple effect that that has had. Listen, he found the Torah. He found the first five books of the Bible. Like, what would have happened if Josiah would have just been lazy, kept this terrible legacy that Hezekiah kept? Who knows what life in 2017 would be today? I don't know. But thankfully, through the sovereign hand of God, he allowed Josiah to find this and to turn this ship around. Now, all eyes up here. Here's the challenge. Here's what I want you to think about. Here's what I want you to apply as Christ followers. What is a crummy legacy, or what is there going on in your life that you need to respond like Josiah did? What is it that maybe you've inherited, and Satan wants to keep you down and say, there's really nothing you can do about it, it's just the card you've been dealt. You stop that. Thank you. Oh, Rebecca, I'm so sorry. Is that Rebecca or Pilar? Oh, she's so sweet, too. Her face is so red. Okay, all, all eyes back up here. That was the Samuel L. Jackson voice reading scripture. It's real wondering. I've done that before, yes. Okay, all eyes back up here. What legacy or what is it that you have inherited that you need to turn that ship around? What is it? Maybe there's just sin in your life. And you've grown okay to that. You, you, you're numb, you're callous towards hiding away, putting away God's word. But maybe you need to step up and say no more. Like Josiah led God's people to a covenant with his word and with God. So let's continue in this packet. Um, I want to do this. We have about 10, 15 more minutes left. Um, I want you guys to um, turn to a neighbor. One neighbor. One neighbor. Choose your neighbor wisely. And I want you guys to discuss... All eyes up here. I want you guys to discuss these three questions. Listen. What kind of legacy are you currently leaving behind? What changes would you need to make to leave a better legacy? And what can you do now to help the leaders after you carry on where you leave off? Now, very quietly and quickly, I want you to turn to a neighbor. Leaders, I want you to hop in with other kids. So leaders don't turn to leaders, or leaders don't have another kid. Leaders hop in with other kids. And I want you guys to discuss this. Three, two, one. Okay, turn your attention back up here. If you and your neighbor uh, have not had time to finish, then when a live is over, the conversations can still happen. Things can be cultivated, and uh, it's not manufactured through just our live service. So I want you guys to be challenged. Here's the big takeaway. When you get in the car, and your parents say, hey, what did Tim talk about? What is it you learned? Obviously, I want us to be thinking that question. What type of legacy do you want to leave behind? Uh, the reason why I talked about the Fine Arts Center is um, I went there today um, at 1 o'clock. And I've had a crazy day. I was actually in Virginia this weekend. I officiated a wedding. There's actually people who let me marry them. Thanks, uh, this. <laughs> However, this was the first wedding ceremony I missed up. And this is like my 10th one. I was reading the vows, and uh, 
the, the girl, we went to high school together at Southside, and she married this guy named Dave, who was actually on my hall freshman year in college. So it's ridiculous. Somehow they met, and now they're married. They're married. Uh, actually, I need to mail in the license tomorrow, so they're not married. Yet. But they will be once I'm married. Yet. Um, and I was reading the vows, and I said, Allie, do you take your husband? And I, I got the genders mixed up. So I was saying, Allie, uh, do you take Dave to be your uh, wedded husband, to love her, to love, love her? And I was like, Dave, do you take Allie? And I was like, him. And, I, and it was wrong in my notes. So like, even when I typed it, I did it wrong. And as I'm reading it, I'm like, this isn't right, but stick to the notes. <laughs> So I kid you not, so I messed that up. While we were eating dinner at the, uh, the reception afterwards, this old man walks up to me and goes, you know, you did a pretty good job, but 2017 isn't the time to get gender roles wrong. <laughs> and I was like, hey, you're, you're, you're actually really right. I was like so embarrassed. So I was there this weekend. I woke up at six this morning. I had a five hour car drive. Ahead of me, I get in the car, I'm blazing down Highway 29, which goes into 85, and I had to go to this um, retirement party for a guy named Dr. Roy Floor. And if you know who Roy is, like the Fine Arts Center would have been nothing like it is today without the dedication and the faithfulness of Roy to the Fine Arts. I mean, and the man is just incredible. Every time I'm around him, I just get super excited, I feel motivated, I feel challenged. But let me share something with you. At this retirement party, they had like old guests that were alumni of the school come back and perform just for Lord, like to honor him at this retirement party. And all the words that we heard spoken, and even Roy got up and said a few words, my heart kind of hurt because I feel like everything he has built can so easily be crumbled because it's the things of this life. It's the things of this world. Like everything they were praising Roy for, I was like, this is honorable and I think this is great. But the legacy he's leaving behind isn't making ripple effects into the kingdom at all. In my opinion, that's a tragedy. We're here to honor a man, which yeah, he's awesome. He doesn't fear the Lord, but his legacy that he's leaving behind is that of this life. In my opinion, that's a tragedy, but, but how much more should we be thinking to not let that tragedy happen in our life? To make that ripple effect for the kingdom huge, just like Edward Kimball did. To be faithful, to do the work of the Lord, and then watch the supernatural happen. We've talked about the supernatural. When you follow God, things that aren't normal happen. When you see the supernatural, you can step back and say, man, that is a work of God. Because there's no way I could do that. So what I want you guys to do is I want you to hold on to this path. I want you guys to make this your time with God throughout this whole week. Everyone look at me in the eyes if you're committed to doing this. Leaders leave a legacy. But leaders that are in Jesus leave a legacy for the kingdom. Leave a legacy of impact to point people to Jesus and not to self. Or our talents or the things of this life or of this world. Leaders leave a legacy, but leaders that follow Jesus leave a legacy for the kingdom. Amen? Amen. And so that's what I want to challenge you guys with this week, to really consider that. What type of legacy are you leaving? So I'm going to pray for us, and then when I'm done praying, I just have one other thing I want to say, and then we'll be dismissed. You guys good? Cool. God, uh, thank you for this time. Uh, I, I feel so blessed from tonight. God, thank you for Brian who led us in worship. Thank you for the ways that you have given him talents and a passion, but God, he is using it to glorify you. I thank you for my other leaders in this room who you have gifted and you have given so many talents and incredible attributes, but God, they're leaving that to leave a legacy of impact in this next generation. God, that's what it's all about. Would you bring more leaders to this ministry? 
God, would you continue to, to, to grow up huge crops of leaders in this youth group? God, what kind of legacy do we want to leave at Eastside High School? What kind of legacy do we want to leave at Severe Middle? God, that, that's what I want to have happen in this youth group, that when we leave, we leave a legacy, ripple effect for the kingdom of God, to point people to Jesus, not point people to ourselves. Again, God, thank you for these new seventh graders that you have brought to our family. Help us to take care of them and shepherd them well. Thank you for our upperclassmen, God. May they lead by example, lead with integrity. Lord, I'm so excited for this summer. Lord, prepare our hearts this week as we continue to dive into 2 Kings. God, thank you that we have this example of poor leadership, poor legacy leading like we see in Hezekiah. God, I pray that if there are Hezekiahs in this room right now, God, that you, by the work of your spirit, just convict their hearts. Would you raise up more Josiahs in this youth group? God, that would recognize poor leadership, that would recognize sin, that would recognize people or themselves that turn from God. And would we be leaders, would we be examples, would we be bold and confident for the sake of Jesus to point others to God and his word. Lord, thank you that that's Josiah's legacy. How awesome is that? So Lord, help us to hang out in 2 Kings chapter 22 and 23 to read a little bit more about Hezekiah and Josiah. God, thank you for this time tonight. Help us to not lose these packets and to be diligent with them because it cost our church a lot of money to print them. So help us to honor the money of this church. We commit this time to you. We love you. I pray this in your name. Amen.